Um, so this afternoon we'll be discussing about uh, shock taken from Swartz 10th edition chapter 5. So for the overview, shock is the failure to meet metabolic needs of the cell and conse consequences that ensue. So we have here brief historical background on the topic shock. Um, Ah, wait na para. Kita na? Yes, Doc. Okay, so we have... <clears throat> first, we have Claude Bernard um, from the mid-19th century. He suggested that organism attempts to maintain constancy in the internal environment against external forces that attempt to disrupt milieu interior or internal environment. Then we have Walter Cannon. Um, he continued Bernard's observation, introduced the term homeostasis, and he first described um, he first described fight or flight response. So an organism's ability to survive was related to maintenance and homeostasis. So the failure of physiologic systems to buffer organism against external forces results in organ cellular dysfunction, what is clinically recognized as shock. Then we have Alfred Blalock. He denounced Kahn's theory on shock. Um, so Blalock documented that the shock state in hemorrhage was associated with reduced cardiac output due to volume loss, not toxic factor. So in 1934, he proposed that four categories of shock, um, we have hypovolemic shock, vasogenic shock, cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, um, which, leads, which led, led to further classification of shock. So we have here the types of shock. Um, we have hypovolemic shock, septic shock, cardiogenic shock, neurogenic shock, traumatic, and obstruct obstructive shock. So we go to the pathophysiology of shock. Um, the initial physiological responses in shock are driven by tissue hypoperfusion and developing cellular energy deficit. So this imbalance um, between cellular supply and demand leads to neurogenic your endocrine and inflammatory responses. So the specific responses will differ uh, based on the etiologic shock. Um, for example, um, in cardiovascular response driven by the sympathetic nervous system, it is markedly blunted in neurogenic or septic shock. So additionally, decreased perfusion may occur as a consequence of cellular activation and dysfunction such as in septic shock and to a lesser extent, traumatic shock. So in a nutshell, uh, pathways leading to decreased tissue perfusion in shock. Um, so decreased tissue perfusion can result directly from hemorrhage or hypovolemia, cardiac failure or neurologic injury. Decreased tissue perfusion and cellular injury can then result in immune and inflammatory responses. So alternatively, elaboration of microbial products during infection or release of endogenous cellular growth products from tissue injury can result in cellular activation to subsequently influence tissue perfusion and the development of shock. So we have the phases of shock. I'm here. Uh, the pathophysiologic responses vary with time and in response to resuscitation. So in um, hemorrhagic shock, um, in hemorrhagic shock, the body can compensate for the initial loss of blood, um, primarily through the neuro neuroendocrine response to maintain hemodynamics. So we have here the in compensated phase, um, your endocrine response maintain hemodynamics. We also have the compensation phase, um, which is a microcirculatory dysfunction, parenchymal tissue damage, and inflama inflammation, inflammatory. Mm 
And we also have irreversible phase, um, which is the persistent hyperperfusion results in further hemodynamic derangement and cardiovascular collapse. So we have um, vicious cycle of shock, um, microcirculatory dysfunction, parenchymal tissue damage, and inflammatory cell activation can perpetuate hyperperfusion. So ischemia, reperfusion injury will often exacerbate the initial insult. So these effects at the cellular level, if untreated, will lead to compromise of function of organs, um, thus leading to vicious cycle of shock. So the vicious cycle of shock, um, regardless of etiology, um, is decreased tissue perfusion and shock results in feed forward loop, feed forward loop that can exacerbate cellular injury and tissue dysfunction. So we have neuroendocrine and organ-specific responses to hemorrhage. Uh, neuroendocrine responses is to maintain perfusion to the heart and the brain even at the expense of other organ systems. So mechanisms include autonomic control of peripheral tone and cardiac contractility, hormonal response to stress and volume depletion, local microcirculatory mechanisms that are organ-specific and regulate regional blood flow. And in hemorrhagic shock, the magnitude of neuroendocrine response based on both the volume of blood lost and rate at which it is lost. So we have here afferent signals. Um, afferent impulses transmitted from the periphery are processed within central nervous system and activate the re reflective um, effector responses or efferent impulses. So we have baroreceptor and chemoreceptor. So in baroreceptor, um, there is uh, volume receptors activated with low volume hemorrhage or mild reduction in right atrial pressure and inhibits induction of ANS. <clears throat> so in baroreceptor, um, fast acting, um, this is a fast acting BP control. So when um, you have low or high BP, it will be detected immediately, then normalizes. So when they're in a kaya, as you know, it's not um, a um, RAS. Um, renin angiotensin allosterone system. Then we have chemoreceptor. Um, this is sensitive to changes in O2 tension, high um, hydrogen ion concentration, and carbon dioxide levels. So chemoreceptors um, na respond in here to low oxygen levels and high, um, high carbon dioxide concentration. When the BP is less than, I think, 80 millimeters mercury. Then we have efferent signals, um, changes in cardiovascular function, um, hemorrhagic shock and hypovolemic shock um, result to the neuroendocrine response and ANS response to shock and constitute a prominent feature of both the body's adaptive response mechanism and the clinical signs and symptoms of the patient in shock. So um, hemorrhage here, bleed or bleeding, results in diminished venous return to the heart and decreased cardiac output. So this is um, compensated um, by the increase in cardiac heart rate and contractility, as well as venous and arterial vas restriction. And then sympathetic stimulation of the peripheral circulation via the activation of alpha-1 adrenergic receptors, um, which vasoconstricts and causes a compensatory increase in systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure. Um, thus induces catecholamine release from the adrenal medulla, um, which causes the increase in glyco glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Um, so if there is um, increased glucose, now, um, there will be um, increased circulating 
glucose, um, skeletal glycogenolysis, and glucagon release, and there will be insulin decreased insulin release. So we have here the um, hemodynamic responses to different types of shock. Um, in hypovolemic shock, there is um, decreased cardiac index with increased um, vascular resistance. In septic shock naman, there is um, severe increase in cardiac index and decreased vascular resistance. Ha cardiogenic shock naman, there is severe um, decrease in cardiac index and severe increase in vascular resistance. And ha neurogenic shock, there is increase in cardiac index and decrease in vascular resistance. And then we have formula response. Um, shock stimulates the hypothalamus, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access, um, which releases um, releases ACTH hormone, ACTH hormone by the pituitary. So in the ACTH, um, this stimulates the adrenal cortex to release the cortisol. Um, cortisol naman, um, this stimulates the gluconeogenesis and insulin resistance. So in, in setting of severe hypovolemia, ACTH secretion occurs independently of cortisol, um, negative feedback inhibition. Then we have um, renin angiotensin system. So ang mga nakinyayakan kanina, uh, so kung di rin na kaya ito ang baroreceptor na i-compensate ito ang increased or decrease ang BP, um, raas of course. So when there's um, raas, parang nadedetect, nadedetect niya ito ang kuwan. Ito ang low sodium concentration of blood. So when there is hemorrhage, um, maridetect hakuan uh, macula densa. Ito ang um, decreased sodium uh, blood. So um, mag-release ano yan kuan, raas, um, raas will release uh, renin. Renin then converts angiotensin, angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Um, then converts uh, there's convert convert conversion by um, ACE or the uh, to become angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 naman um amot nag increase ito ang BP then there is also release in ADH um, so may damay kita sinisaring nga where sodium goes di ba water follows so say mini hapuan ha bleeding. So if there is bleeding, um, there there will be decrease in sodium. So ma decrease gap in water. So to compensate, um, there will be uh, secretion of ADH. Um, secretion of ADH will be released um, to reabsorb water in the body. Para there na maging fun maginawa si itong tubig halawas. So that's the function of ADH. Then we have circulatory homeostasis. Uh, we have preload, which is the volume of blood in the ventricle at the end of diastole. Then we have ventricular contraction. Um, the frank starling curve describes the force or uh, of ventricular contraction as a function of its preload. So we have afterload. Um, this is the force that resists myocardial work during contraction. And microcirculation naman, um, there is integral role in, in regulating cellular perfusion and is significantly influenced in response to shock. Oh, wait lang, nag-text si Dr. Kapungkul. Um, okay. So, we have cellular hypoperfusion. Um, oxygen death, um, there is uh, deficient in 
tissue oxygenation over time during shock. So oxygen delivery is limited, water consumption is inadequate to match the metabolic needs. Um, then we have immune and inflammatory responses. So complex set of interactions between soluble factors and cells that can arise in response to trauma, infection, ischemia, toxic, or autoimmune stimuli. So innate and adaptive um, immune system also works here. Uh, alterations in activity can be responsible for both the development and sequelae of shock. Uh, so we have here uh, damage associated molecular patterns or dumps. Um, these are recognized by cells, um, cell surface receptors to affect intracellular signaling that primes and amplifies the immune response. So I'm um, on here and an examples of endogenous damage associated molecular pattern. And then we have um, the schema of information of flow between immune cells in early inflammation following tissue injury. Um, so, major complicated in here ako and illustration had you, but kino ko rin yung pin of digest. So, kwa na lah ko ang hatin libro, basa na lah kita. <laughs> so, ang pinaka ni nga di, pinaka pointing nga ni, am cells like neutrophils, macrophage, and lymphocytes, uh, they require multiple inputs and stimuli before um, before they activate a full response. Then we have cytokines. Um, we have we have pro-inflammatory cytokines and anti-inflammatory cytokines. Um, examples of pro-inflammatory are interleukins one, two, six, eight, and interferon TGF, TNF, and PAF. Then we have anti-inflammatory. Um, consists of interleukin 4, 10, 13, PGE2, and TGB. So in a pro-inflammatory, um, this induces inflammatory response. Bangat ko nin hiya. Um, nananawag in example leukocyte during an inflammation. So ang mga pro hiya, pro-inflammatory. So ini naman, anti, anti meaning bakat inhibition gini inhibit niya ito ang response to inflammation. Then we have complement system. Um, these are activated by injury, <coughs> shock, and severe infection. This contributes to host defense and pro-inflammatory activation and complement consumption of course after hemorrhagic shock. We also have neutrophils. Um, these are the first cells to be recruited to the site of injury. So activated um, PMNs and their products may also produce cell injury and organ dysfunction. So we have here the forms of shock. First, we have uh, hypovolemic shock or hemorrhagic shock. So these are most common of uh, most common of Cause of shock in surgical or trauma patients, um, which is the loss of circulating volume from hemorrhage. So, I'm on here na na during hypovolemic shock or hemorrhagic shock. So, uh, acute blood loss results in reflexive decreased baron receptor stimulation from stretch receptors in large arteries, the, then resulting in decreased inhibition of vasoconstrictor um, centers of the brainstem then increased chemoreceptor stimulation of vasomotor centers um, and then diminished output from atrial stress receptors um, so this changes in increased vasoconstriction and peripheral arterial resistance so in continuation 
um, hypovolemia here also includes sympathetic stimulation leading to epinephrine and norepinephrine release. So activation of the RAAS cascade and increased vasopressin release. So peripheral vasoconstriction is prominent while lack of sympathetic effects on cerebral and coronary vessels and local autoregulation promote maintenance of cardiac and CNS blood flow. So for the diagnosis of shock, um, this is initially um, done with empiric treatment. Um, um, we secure first the airway or establish uh, the volume of infusion initiated while the search for the cause of hypotension is pursued. So shock here in a trauma patient or post-operative patient should be presumed due to hemorrhage until proven otherwise. So we have here a, the signs of shock evidenced by agitation, cool crown extremities, <laughs> tachycardia, weak or absent peripheral pulses, and hypotension. So when a patient is significantly tachycardic or hypotensive, um, this commonly, of course, um, this represents significant blood loss, physiologic and physiologic decompensation. So the clinical and physiologic response to hemorrhage has been classified according to the um, magnitude of volume loss. So for the treatment naman of hypovolemic shock, um, this uh, to secure the airway, control the source of blood loss, intravenous resuscitation. So in patients who fail to respond to initial resuscitation efforts should be assumed to have ongoing active hemorrhage from large vessels and require prompt operative intervention. So actively bleeding patient cannot be resuscitated until um, control of ongoing hemorrhage is achieved. So for the traumatic shock naman, uh, the systemic response after trauma combining the effect of soft tissue injury, long bone fractures, and blood loss is clearly a different physiologic insult than simple hemorrhagic shock. So multiple organ system failure here, um, including ARDS, develops relatively often in blunt trauma patient, but rarely after pure hemorrhagic shock, such as GI bleeding. So under traumatic shock, we have hyperperfusion deficit. Um, these are magnified by pro-inflammatory activation that occurs following the induction of shock. So for the treatment naman, um, we focus on correction of individual elements to diminish the cascade of pro-inflammatory activation. So this includes prompt control of hemorrhage, adequate volume resuscitation to correct auto death, debrigma of non-viable tissue, stabilization of bone injuries, and appropriate treatment of, tissue, of soft tissue injuries. Next, we have septic shock or vasodilatory shock. Um, this results to dysfunction of endothelium and vasculature secondary to circulating inflammatory mediators and cells or as a response to prolonged and severe hyperperfusion. So in vasodilatory shock, hypotension results from failure of vascular smooth muscle to constrict appropriately. So this is characterized by vasodilation with resultant to hypotension and resistance to treatment with vasopressors. Causes of septic shock and vasodilatory shock, we have systemic response to infection, non-infectious systemic inflammation, pancreatitis, burns, anaphylaxis, acute adrenal insufficiency, prolonged severe hypotension, 
hemorrhagic shock, cardiogenic shock, cardiopulmonary bypass, metabolic and hypoxic lactic acidosis, and carbon monoxide poisoning. For the diagnosis naman, um, manifestation of, of the host response to infection and identification of an offending organism. So when we say shock, um, the terms sepsis, severe sepsis, and septic shock are used to quantify um, pag-quantify ito ang magnitude of systemic uh, inflammatory reaction. So patients with sepsis have evidence of infection um, as well as systemic signs of inflammation. Um, systemic signs of inflammation such as um, like fever, uh, leukocytosis, and tachycardia. So terms to quantify the magnitude of systemic inflammatory reaction uh, so, amon nga diyan ko ang sepsis, severe sepsis, and septic shock. So, in sepsis, there is evidence of an infection as well as systemic signs of inflammation. A severe sepsis naman, there is hypoperfusion with signs of organ dysfunction. While in septic shock naman, there is evidence of tissue hypoperfusion and systemic hypotension plus two of the above. For the treatment, assessment of adequacy of their airway and ventilation, fluid resuscitation, and restoration of circulatory volume with balanced salt solutions is essential. Empiric antibiotics must be chosen after um, carefully based on the most likely pathogens. Long-term empiric spectrum antibiotics should be minimized. Then for the first-line therapy of um, septic shock, um, syempre, we have antibiotics, IV fluids, intubation, so if it's necessary, and vasopressors may be necessary to treat patients with septic shock. Then we have uh, cardiogen cardiogenic shock. So this is a circulatory pump failure leading to diminished forward flow and subsequent tissue hypoxia in the setting of adequate intravascular volume. So for the hemodynamic criteria, we have sustained hypertension, reduced cardiac index of less than 2.2 liter per minute per square meter, and elevated pulmonary artery wedge pressure of more than 15 millimeter mercury. So causes of cardiogenic shock, we have acute myocardial infarction, pump failure, mechanical complications, uh, acute mitral regurgitation, acute ventricular septal defect, free wall rupture, uh, pericardial tamponade, arrhythmia, and stage cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, severe myocardial contusion, left ventricular heart flow obstruction, aortic stenosis, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, obstruction to left ventricular filling, mitral stenosis, left atrial myosoma, acute mitral regurgitation, acute aortic insufficiency, metabolic and drug reactions. So cause of cardiogenic shock, uh, acute extensive MI, uh, this is the most common cause of cardiogenic shock. Diagnosis naman, um, rapid identification of the patient with calm failure um, and the ongoing spiral of decreased cardiac output from injury causing increased myocardial oxygen uh, needs to be needs that cannot be met, leading to progressive and unremitting cardiac dysfunction. So for the treatment naman, um, air assessment, adequate ventilation, Circulation support. So intubation and mechanical ventilation often are required if only to decrease the work of breathing and facilitate sedation of the patient. Hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia should be corrected. Pain is treated with IV, IV morphine, sulfate, or fentanyl. Then significant dysarrhythmias and heart block must be treated with antiarrhythmic drugs 
placing cardioversion if necessary. Um, then we have obstructive shock. Um, causes of obstructive shock are pericardial tamponade, pulmonary embolus, tension pneumothorax, IV obstruction, deep venous um, under IV obstruction, we have deep venous thrombosis, gravid uterus, and IVC, neoplasm. And then increased intrathoracic pressure. Under it, we have excess positive and expiratory pressure and neoplasm. So although obstructive shock can be caused by a number of different geologies, um, venous, um, venous obstruction return in patients, this is the most common due to presence of tension in the thorax. So the most common cause of shock, of obstructive shock. For the diagnosis and treatment naman, uh, obstructive shock, um, classic findings are respiratory distress, hypotension, diminished breath sounds over the hemothorax, hyperresonance to percussion, jugular venous distension, shift of mediastinal structures to the unaffected side with tracheal deviation. For a treatment naman, uh, empiric treatment with plural decompression is indicated rather than delaying to it uh, for radiographic confirmation. Then we have neogenic shock. Um, this is a diminished tissue perfusion as a result of loss of vasomotor tone to peripheral arterial bands. So usually, um, these are secondary to spinal cord injuries from vertebral body fractures in the cervical or high thoracic region that disrupt sympathetic regulation of peripheral vascular tone. So causes of neogenic shock um, are spinal cord trauma, spinal cord neoplasm, and spinal or epidural anesthetic. So for the causes naman, causes of neogenic shock, Acute spinal cord injury may result in bradycardia, hypotension, cardiac dysarrhythmias, reduced cardiac output, and decreased peripheral vascular resistance. Uh, the severity of the spinal cord injury seems to correlate with magnitude of cardiovascular dysfunction. So for the treatment of neurogenic shock naman, uh, secure airway, adequate ventilation, fluid resuscitation, and restoration of intravascular volume. And administration of vasoconstrictors should be um, considered once hypovolemia is excluded. <clears throat> then we have endpoints and resuscitation. So shock, as we all know, is defined as inadequate perfusion to maintain normal organ function. <clears throat> with prolonged anaerobic metabolism, tissue acidosis, and auto death accumulate. So the goal of treatment here um, is the restoration of adequate organ perfusion and tissue oxygenation. So when can we say that resuscitation is complete? So when there is um, oxygen that, um, when, if there is O2 that is rep uh, repaid, tissue acidosis is corrected, and aerobic metabolism is restored. So for the endpoints in resuscitation, um, kung kulang na talaga ito in kuhan, oxygen, and endpoints, endpoints resuscitation, um, we have here uh, surrogate parameters to estimate the O2 that para mabayaran kung tanong oxygen. Um, we have systemic or global, tissue-specific, and cellular. So, so systemic, um, common here are the lactate and base deficit. Uh, lactate is generated by conversion of pyruvate to lactate uh, by lactate dehydrogenase in the setting of insufficient oxygen. A base deficit naman, um, this is the amount of base in millimoles that's required to titrate one liter of full blood to a pH of 
So ang dia tissue specific naman um gastric tonometries is like most common here. Uh, lactate and base deficit indicate global tissue acidosis. Then under cellular, we have membrane potential and adenosine triphosphate. So for the assessment, uh, arterial blood pressure, heart rate, urine output, central venous pressure, and pulmonary artery conclusion, pressure are poor indicators of the adequacy of perfusion. So as said earlier, uh, surrogate parameters have been sought to estimate the auto death. We have serum lactate and base deficit have been shown to correlate with auto death. So I think that's all for my um, lecture today. May na ko nagpakita nga video ay wait lang. So when we talk about ischemia, we're usually talking about this lack of blood flow to a specific area of tissue. So maybe like with a heart attack, a coronary artery in the heart gets blocked that supplies the left ventricle with blood. So that localized area of heart tissue doesn't get enough blood and oxygen, and that damage is localized to that left ventricle. Shock is like ischemia, but on a global scale. In other words, it's a whole body circulatory failure, where blood flow to tissues is dangerously low leading to cellular injury, possibly damaging multiple organs, and even leading to multiple organ failure if not treated immediately. Okay, so with shock, the body's tissues aren't getting enough oxygen via the blood, right? Normally, blood perfuses through tissue and delivers oxygen because there's enough pressure in the circulatory system to push it through. So blood pressure is a major determinant for the amount of blood perfusing through tissues. Now, blood pressure is determined by two components the resistance to blood flow in the blood vessels, things like vessel length, blood viscosity, and vessel diameter, and the cardiac output, which is the volume of blood pumped by the heart through the body per minute. And you can break that into heart rate, the number of beats per minute, times stroke volume, the amount pumped out each beat. Going even further, the stroke volume is found by taking the total volume of blood left over after contraction, the end systolic volume, and subtracting it from the total volume in the heart after filling, the end diastolic volume. Alright, now keeping all those in mind, shock can be caused by a whole bunch of different things, but we can categorize the different types of shock into three main categories, along with some subcategories here and there. The first category is called hypovolemic shock. Hypo means low, vol refers to volume, and emia refers to the blood. So hypovolemic shock is shock induced by a low fluid volume of blood. And this could be either non-hemorrhagic or hemorrhagic. Non-hemorrhagic means that the loss of fluid volume isn't from bleeding. So this could be like if you were stranded in a desert and suffered severe dehydration. Eventually, your loss of fluid and sweat would reduce blood volume to where it wouldn't be enough to supply your body's organs, and you develop hypovolemic shock. Hemorrhagic hypovolemic shock, on the other hand, is loss of blood volume through ruptured blood vessels, in other words, from bleeding. A loss of about 20% of your total blood volume, roughly 1 liter, can be enough to induce hypovolemic shock, and when that liter of blood leaves the circulation, the total volume filling into the heart goes down, meaning the end diastolic volume goes down, right? This means stroke volume goes down as well, which causes cardiac output to go down, and finally we see that blood pressure goes down. When cardiac output goes down, catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine, ADH and angiotensin II are released, all of which cause vasoconstriction of blood vessels, which increases vascular resistance and increases heart rate, which increases cardiac output. And these combined effects all increase blood pressure. A super important indicator of tissues not getting enough oxygen due to hypovolemia is a decreased mixed venous oxygen saturation, or MVO2. MVO2 is the amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin in blood coming to the right side of the heart from the tissues. So it's like the amount of oxygen left over or not extracted and used by the tissues, 
So if blood volume's down, that means oxygen's down, and there's going to be less left over, right? So MVO2 will be down with hypovolemic shock. Since blood flow provides heat to the tissues as well, when it's down, the skin starts to feel cool and clammy, and so hypovolemic shock is considered a cold shock. A second main category of shock is cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic means produced by the heart, right? So this is when something happens to the heart such that now it can't pump enough blood to the body's tissues. The most common cause is acute myocardial infarction, or heart attack. Hold on a second, though. Didn't I say at the beginning that that was more along the lines of localized ischemia? Well, the heart attack itself reflects ischemia, right? But these effects of the initial cardiac damage eventually leads to a state of shock. When the heart's muscle cells die, it can't contract as hard, which means the amount of blood pumped out, or stroke volume, goes down, and therefore cardiac output goes down as well. In the same way as with hypovolemic shock, the body releases vasoconstrictors to increase vascular resistance and help maintain blood pressure. Also, as with hypovolemic shock, MVO2 will be down since there's less oxygen being pumped out, and so less will be left over. Sometimes there might be an obstruction that doesn't allow the heart to fill properly with blood. For example, we might have the pericardial sac fill up with fluid from an infection or blood from a traumatic accident, like getting stabbed in the chest. If this sac fills up, it physically constricts the heart from expanding and contracting normally, and also reduces the stroke volume. This is sometimes subclassified as obstructive shock. But you can see that the cause is still due to the heart's inability to do its job, right? Similarly to hypovolemic shock, a reduction in cardiac output leads to lowered blood flow, so the skin gets cool and clammy, and so cardiogenic shock is also considered a kind of cold shock. All right. The third main category of shock is called distributive shock, where there's typically a leakiness of blood vessels and an excessive amount of arterial vasodilation, or widening of the peripheral blood vessels, which remember is one of the components of vascular resistance. If arterioles dilate, vascular resistance to blood flow goes down and blood pressure goes down, leading to less perfusion and distribution of blood to organs and tissues. Now, the most common type of distributive shock is septic shock from pathogens in the blood. What happens with septic shock is endotoxins, these large, clunky lipopolysaccharide molecules, sometimes just called LPSs, found in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria causes a crazy cascade of events that ultimately leads to lowered perfusion. First, these guys directly damage endothelial cells and cause them to release vasodilators like nitric oxide. They also activate the complement pathway in the blood, which stimulates mast cell release of histamine, another vasodilator. The LPS molecules also activate immune cells like macrophages and neutrophils, which help create a bunch of pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1. These help the immune system destroy the invaders, but they also stimulate the endothelial cells to release more inflammatory molecules like platelet activating factor and reactive oxygen species. All of these inflammatory chemicals damage the endothelial cells and increases their vascular permeability, making the blood vessels leaky. Also, endothelial cells express a procoagulant called tissue factor. Procoagulants are molecules that increase blood coagulation, or blood clotting. And this, in combination with an overall decrease in anticoagulants, which usually decrease clotting and seem to be often depleted or used up during sepsis, leads to this net increase in coagulation and clotting in the microvasculature. And, of course, clotting and blockages in the blood vessels further decreases perfusion, right? Okay, so this widespread vasodilation means very little vascular resistance, and blood can't get the chance to unload as much oxygen as it cruises through the vasculature, and it gets back to the right side of the heart with leftover oxygen. So in this case, as opposed to cardiogenic and hypovolemic shock, MVO2 can be normal or even increased. In contrast to hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock, now there's an increase in flow in the peripheral blood vessels, and the skin becomes warm and flushed. So distributive shock is a kind of warm shock. The overall combined effects of widespread vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, and microvascular blood clotting all contribute to decreased perfusion of blood to vital organs. Now, two kind of subtypes of distributive shock are anaphylactic shock, 
which is an allergic reaction that causes dangerously low blood pressure, and neurogenic shock, where the nervous system gets damaged and can't control the body's blood pressure. The treatment of shock depends on the cause. In general, the goal is to stabilize blood pressure so that vital organs like the heart and the brain are perfused with blood. In order to stabilize blood pressure, fluid replacement and medications that increase heart contractility, cause vasoconstriction, and retain fluid can be administered. Oftentimes, a person might need supplemental oxygen or have their airway protected, for example, with intubation. All right, as a quick recap, shock is ultimately a failure in tissue perfusion, and it affects the whole body, putting tissues and organs at risk for injury and ultimately organ failure. Hypovolemic shock happens when dehydration or hemorrhage reduces the volume of blood in the blood vessels. Cardiogenic shock happens when a direct injury like a heart attack or an obstruction like a pericardial effusion prevents the heart from pumping blood efficiently. Distributive shock happens when something like an allergic reaction or damage to the nervous system, called neurogenic shock, causes the blood vessels to vasodilate and become leaky, which reduces the resistance and lowers the blood pressure. Um, so that ends my report. Thank you. <laughs> what time at the exam? Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, pardon? Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Oh, okay. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. Though. Thank you so much. Any question from the group? No, pay on a video, actually. The video presented it simpler and easy. Okay. Shock is just like that. Shock. No? Um, inability of the body to compensate for oxygen ventilation or your PQ ratio or VQ <clears throat> ratio in the body, which is which causes death, no? Which causes death or problem to to the body. So, amulet siya. Once nga ni Diri mahatagin maopay, it oxygenation or ventilation perfusion, VQ, to the body, it will go into siya. So, lot, there are many causes to that. So, kung nagkita ka mohan video, yung present day Paul, and then you've listened to him while he was doing the report, then you would understand. A simple basic there lang is this. Just remember the circulatory system. Okay? Amuleto affected hit shock. The circulatory system, meaning the efferent, the heart, and the afferent. Tama ba? Efferent is going back to the heart, right? Efferent vessels. Afferent vessels are those vessels that are coming out from the heart. And then the heart. So meaning, amuleto interpreted that. Efferent, heart, afferent, and then the blood inside those passages, okay? So, hypovolemic shock, meaning low blood volume. But as I just don't forget that when we say shock, it means that it's the, more or less, the severe type of the losses in whatever way it is. That's why it is not... So, hypovolemic shock, karag siya kung nag-UTIT mo blood volume, hypo, low volume, and emia is blood. So, hypovolemic. UTIT blood volume, di rin nahiya kaya uh, mag-circulate man, pero di rin kaya mag-oxygenate and bubus ka body. Okay? So, definitely ang problem, di rin adaha imo vessels, di rin adaha heart. Adaha solute. So, and volume, and blood. So, most common of that, the hypovolemic shock is the most common in surgery. The surgical basis of shock is uh, this trauma, no? mga blood loss, definitely. But there is also hypovolemic shock as in his headache. ka ng blood loss. Water loss. Dehydration, LBM, at mga sugatid ko. As long as maghabubuti mo blood volume, it will affect also the perfusion ratio to the body. Right? 
Second, kung may problema ka ng heart. So, kung man nani mo tibalik, man nani mo blood volume, so ang problema mo yan, hindi mo heart mismo. So, if it is the heart that is the problem, tawag dito cardiogenic. No? The origin is from the heart. Bisan ano na makakakos if hindi mo heart not to pump well, can go. Infarction, ischemia, uh, ano pa ba ito po? Alam si Rick. But may dito sa pa of offshoot hit ko ay is obstructive shock. Pero itong obstructive shock actually can be a part of cardiogenic but can also stand on its own. So may nga obstructive, anything that will obstruct the flow or the function. No? Flow and blood volume ni mo ma-obstruct, obstruct, obstructive shock. Hindi mag-flowin, ma-upay, may tungkol kay nadudunan niya, nakukompress. Let's say, for example, there is venous or your inferior vena cava or superior vena cava compression. So, hindi rin nakabalik it heart, it blood blood circulation na heart in ma-upay. It is also an obstructive shock. So, most commonly, what, a surgical basis is ni mga pneumohemothorax. No? Pneumohemothorax is not cardiogenic in origin, kaya di rin man iya ang heart nagkakaproblema. Di yung heart is adi di hip thoracic cage. Naging crazy ti mo pressure, naipit ang heart, di na yan nakakatiwain mo ba. So now weak, it yung pag pump. So obstructive yung pit ho. Basta anything yung magbabara, anything makakabara, mga thrombosis, no? Thrombosis, embolus. Basta anything makakabara, hindi mo blood circulation, can cause cardiogenic, tawag diri, obstructive siya. Maging cardiogenic siya kaya kung iti mo heart mismo ito piktado, nga diri yung nakakakampin mo ba. But if you'll notice, iti mo obstructive, usually, usually. No? May na-obstruct outside, and tulo, no? And vein, vein, heart, and an artery. May na-obstruct ito, nagkukosin weak pumping or weak circulation. So, ano tayo da pa? A nerve, interplanar mo, spinal shock. Spinal shock, anything lang na trauma spine, no? Nga nagkag nagkukos yung problema ay mo sympathetic ang para sympathetic inputs. Usually ada yung sympathetic input at problema. Kaya ba nga nito mo para sympathetic it mag it mag control na dilated na timo vessels. Usually ha mga shock it na pagkaka problema is not the constrictors, no? But the dilators. Amoy rat na supersede, amoy rat na control, so nagda-dilate, there is massive or overall dilatation. So, bisan man normality mo blood volume, bisan normality mo pumping capacity, pero kay paggawas, have you noticed it, ini nga host nga ni? Are you, are you with me? Ini nga host kung nag, ano ito? You are gardening or whatever, nag, gamit ka para pag an again ano term ito buligid daw Ala din na ka mo naggagarden ano water bilikdog pag bilikdog Brodoro na ka mo virtual ano Pray nagbaribi dok nagbaribi Ah oh, pag nagbaribi pag didilig niyon pag didilig If you'll notice kun it host ni mo pabayan mo light iawas tama lang pero if imo constrict mas malatos Do you get it? Imagine niyo. Aneurogenic ka matot problema. Aneurogenic, tama iti mo blood volume. Waray nag-iba na yung blood volume. Tama iti mo cardiac pumping. Kaso lang yung problema, massive vasodilatation. So, imbis nga makakasirculate yan maupay, mahina iti yung circulation. Kaya kung dako yung durutin vessel, kung ti iti mo sulod, mahina iti yung pag-circulate. So, it causes shock. Diri pag hindi makakabalik yung maupay, may tungod yan, imo resistance, di ba? Ano sinisari, peripheral resistance, stroke volume. Stroke volume ni mo, tama eh. Heart rate ni mo, tama. Exact lang, and imo afferent vessels, dag ko. Massive vasodilatation. Why? 
kay nag-act na, hindi mo para sympathetic, hindi mo sympathetic na wala yan na control. Okay? So, massive vasodilatation ni tao dito. That is what we call neurogenic shock. So, neurogenic shock, kanin spinal shock, kanin neurogenic shock, pwede kaya. And imo allergy, actually, bagay suga dito, natatabok. Nag-allergy ka nga rin because of your histamine interplay, more of vasodilatation ni natatabok instead of vasoconstriction. So, bagay yan suga, except lang, it cause may allergy. Ngayon kagat ka hin buyog, nakasimhot ka, or anything, uh, nag-cause an immunologic reaction, na yung tinatawag yung anaphylactic shock. Or nakagap ka hin, hin halas, no? anaphylactic shock. Eh, because an immunovenom halas, nag-cause in massive vasodilatation. So, neurogenic yung PNA-way, kaya may tungod ang interplay hapon na, na an nag-cause, an interplay between your sympathetic and parasympathetic, ibalan niya cause. Okay? So, kung may allergy, anaphylactic siya. Kung spinal trauma or trauma ha immune nerves, which cause the problem with your efferent vessel of nerves na, no? Ano yung parasympathetic? Autonomics nga yung tawag ito. Autonomics, your parasympathetic and sympathetic, then definitely neurogenic kaya. Okay? Nerve in origin. Okay? So... Ini actually nga interplay between sympathetic and parasympathetic ang mga pinikinta tawag na yung nga distributive. No? Kahit yung mo circulation, drug diretso but then again, di rin effective. Na spread out ang yung blood volume pero di rin effective to, 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 to support life. Kaya di rin yung nakakasirculate yung maupay. Nadidistribute yung pero di rin nakakasirculate, di rin nakakabalik yung maupay. Okay, so ito sa ito di daan, imoseptic liwat. It's septic shock actually, baga gapit yan neurogenic. Kaya massive vasodilatation. Kaso lang, di rin kasi cause niya ang sympathetic and parasympathetic response. Except it cause niya ang endotoxin and bacteria. Karong signon, sepsis. You will not have septic shock if you don't have sepsis first. So kanina, hindi niya ni Paul nga dapat ka may dahil yung mga, yung mga uh, factors before you can say the patient is septic, septic at the time, ay yung libro. Di ba? There is a definition for sepsis. Amoy ni temperature, amoy ni neutrophil, amoy ni so on and so forth. Basahe ito niyo. Then may daliwat ang septic shock na. No? Or ano term ito, Paul? Ano ito una? Nalimot na. Doc, may sepsis. Um, sepsis. 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 Ayan. Sepsis, 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 tapos magkakaseptic siya ka na. So may dahil niya mga factor. Di rin mo makakategorize ito sa mga pasyente na sepsis kung di rin ito makikita iya. At di rin lang magsisivir sepsis kung wala tayong hypoperfusion. Karong sigong hypoperfusion, di rin na effective ang pag-circulate ng time. No? Sepsis nga nila, karong sigong overwhelming infection pala ang lawas. Pag-severe sepsis na nga nga ni overwhelming infection that is causing now hypoperfusion halawas. Ganun, magkamay na ka nga nito based any two of those plus di rin na talaga nakaka sering pa nakaka perfuse in maupay then you will have now your septic shock. Ang problema lang septic shock amo ito sinisiring pa ang endotoxin. Nag-increase ang imo bacterial content ha imo lawas, nagkadahan imo circulatory system, nag-infect hindi siya ano. It, imo tendency kasi hit imo lawas is to produce your anti-inflammatory. But then again, before your anti-inflammatory sets in, dapat may pro-inflammatory reaction ka muna. Dapat ma-identify, dapat makita na nga may the bacteria, dapat makita na nga may endotoxin, saka maghatag hit imo mga anti-inflammatory um, signals or any any hormones there no? or factors. So, ito mismo ang interplay between your pro-inflammatory and your anti-inflammatory produces hindi mo endothelium, hindi mo mga blood vessel wall, hindi mo endothelium to separate. So, kalaun-launan, nag-massive massive vasodilatation ka na, nag-separate pa ni endothelium, nalikit yung blood, nag-massive vasodilatation ka, may nakapahypovolemic shock na nasip in. So, tawag ito septic shock. Okay? So, amo lang ito hiya, it interplay. Always remember that. Circulatory system lang ito. Heart, as a pump, an imo venous, venous return, 
as a peripheral vessel and an immoafferent for your arterial system. Okay? So in all, with the blood inside, the, your blood volume or the blood inside, and then also the interplay of your autonomics. Para sympathetic and sympathetic. Amulet. So hindi mo treatment, masayo na yung lahat yung routine treatment. You just follow your ABC. Airway, breathing, circulation, and drugs. <clears throat> okay? Airway, breathing, circulation, and drugs. Kung, hy- kung hemorrhagic or hypovolemic shock, definitely nasabot ka problema. Hypovolemic shock nga ni kayo kung blood loss or fluid loss. So how do you regulate the airway? Waray ka problema airway, okay lang yan, bisan mag-oxygen ka lang, sabong ka lang ng oxygen eh, para lang kuan. No intubation needed, not unless uh, nagsishock. But then again, pag abot na breathing, dapat ito yung breathing mag-control, ma-regulate. Ha circulation, you have to put back what has been lost. Okay? So ang may sinisiring ha surgery, kung stop board namun, tapos ay po uh, uh, nag-shock it, shock it pasyente, shock it pasyente, what we do is insert two large board needles. No? Tagunga needles, large board needles, tapos fast drip with IV fluids. Usually, mga 2 liters para at least mabalik ana it. Mabalik ana in volume. Okay? But definitely, if you replace blood loss with just an IV, hindi rin yap ito tama. Kaya iba tubig or IV, uh, intravenous fluid, yun hindi blood. So definitely, you just have to transfuse fast drip just to maintain the volume, but you have to look for blood to replace the loss. Okay? Pero, don't forget na blood loss siya because of trauma kay surgery ni. So karong signon, dapat ni mo, i-stop ka nag-bleed. Kaya bisang ka sigitin pag pinamutang dida, sigitin ad, gusto mo ma-replace and volume loss, pero sige lalotan niya dugo. I definitely di, di mo matatambag pasyente. So, stop the bleeding, replace the fluid, and that's it. Amo leto ti mo. Uh, hypovolemic siya. Kung magkanto ka neurogenic siya, kung imo lahat ito, neurogenic is talagang volume. no? Bisan man hiyada ko yung duro na, high, massive vasodilatation, but you have to still perfuse. no? Amo ito mga intubation, dapat ka ada, kaya para itong oxygen content tayo mo lang sa mga itaas, para ma-circulate, bisan man yung PIP perfusion ratio, basta may taas mati mo ventilation, at least okay. Then, volume replacement, diri ko diya sugad ka Kaya na neurogenic. Why? Kaya di rin man volume ng problema. Anong problema ang artery. So, mga vasopressors it dapat nila. Okay? Para mag-constrict it mo blood vessel. Para mahabalik mo. Saan so, mo itong may nakamadaan ng mga drip vasopressors. Just for cardiogenic. But also, you have to treat the cardiac problem. E kung na may ito, you have to treat them may. Ang mga problema lang dito, you have to know cardiogenic shock from hypovolemic shock. Because in cardiogenic shock, you should not give more fluids. Because if you give more fluids, ilulumson mo it heart nga nag-fail. Pero kung hypovolemic shock, hindi ka lang maghatag yung fluid, mamamatay talaga yung pasyente. So you really have to know what is the cause of the shock. So kung cardiogenic in origin, karang sigun, it imo heart as a pump it problema, don't give more. Okay? Basta maborden nga na yan fluid, mas makukurya niya. Give more oxygen and then try to constrict the vessels. Okay? But then again, you have to treat the cardiac problem. So kung cardiomyopathy, sometimes you have to go to OR or, you know, mga cardiac, cardiac cardiopressors. Or ano yung mga regulators and rhythm and rate and heart. Kung neurogenic na uh, trauma, spinal, then what I, vasopressor ka lagi hapon, baka ka lang nagka-cardiogenic na uh, treatment. Tapos try to, kung trauma yung spine, then surgery to be done. Kung anaphylactic, take away the allergen, institute, no? Usually, epinephrine malatikin injak, institute, antihistamines, no? Para ma-reverse mo ang allergic reaction. Kung obstructive, then remove what is causing the obstruction. But at the same time, trying to maintain or help help out with the uh, function of the heart and the uh, circulation. Kung septic, shock, definitely you have to eradicate the bacteria causing it or the, bio, or the, the organism causing the sepsis. So massively what you need to do is antibiotics antibiotic treatment. 
but then again, you still have your vasopressors also, and also your fluid uh, management. So far, amuleto, yeah. So just always remember that. Airway, breathing, circulation, and drugs. Okay? Not everything you have to use drugs. Like hypovolemic, blood loss, malaya, drugs is not really that much of use. But kung cardiogenic, damoy durot, pwede mo gamitan yung drugs. And pag treat and heart, pag treat and massive vasodilatation, and also with the distributive thing. Okay? Removal of the cause and then try to regain the function. Do you have any question? 5.30 pa mati yung exam, di ba? Di na ka mo nakabaton yan, ha? Yes po, the 5.30 po. Ah, ano? Romeo, di na nagpapakabato si mga classmate. Bumuton ka naman niya yan, ano? Allergy daw. Oh, allergy. Oh, allergy. Okay. okay. Anyway, um, it's just a multiple choice questions, and Paul and the team actually made it easy for you guys. Deba Paul, masayon nila. Ay nila. They made it for you to pass. At, at least for a reason, kasi ka mumapasa. Okay. So, siguro. Snack na lang ka mo, tapos you come back na lang by 5.30. Or, I don't know, five minutes before that. 